Good morning, everybody. So in today's lesson, lesson 3.3, we're going to be working on comparing and order ordering rational numbers. We're in the we're on page 59 of the sixth grade gold map textbook. And basically the essential question that you should be able to answer and explain is how do you compare and order rational numbers? So let's look at the explore activity. So fractions and decimals that represent the same value are equivalent. The number line shows some equivalent fractions and decimals from 0 to 1. So all we have to do is complete the number line by writing the missing decimals or fractions. <clears throat> all right, so 0. 1 tenth. Well, 1 tenth as a decimal is written as 0 0.1. 0 0.2 is read as 2 tenths. We notice that 1 fourth is in between, so that would be 0 0.25. 3 tenths is 0 0.3. 0 0.4 is read as 4 tenths, or reduces to 2 fifths. 1 half, we would write as 5 tenths. 3, 6 tenths, or three-fifths, seven-tenths, and then three-fourths would it be in between seven and eight, and that would be read as 0 0.75. Four-eighths, uh, four-tenths is the same as eight-tenths, or 0 0.8. 0 0.9 is read as nine-tenths, and one is 10 over 10, basically, right? 10 tenths would be a whole. All right, so use the number line to find a fraction that is equivalent to 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. Well, 25 hundredths would be in between 2 tenths and 3 tenths, 1 fourth. How would we find a decimal equivalent to 1 and 7 tenths? Okay, so we know that 1 and 7 tenths can be rewritten as 1 and 1 plus 7 tenths. Seven tenths equals zero point seven, and one plus zero point seven equals one point seven. So one and seven tenths equals one point seven. All right. So use the number line to complete each statement. Two. 2 tenths is written as 2 tenths. 3 tenths is written in as, as a decimal as 0 0.3. 0 0.75, well that's in between 7 tenths and 8 tenths, and we see that it's 3 fourths or 3 quarters. And 1 and 25 hundredths, or one and one fourth. All right, how does a number line represent equivalent fractions and decimals? Well, they're in the same location, right?
Okay, so if the decimal and a fraction represent the same point on a number line, they're equal. Two temps as it, as, and 0 0.2 share the same point on the number line, and they're equivalent. So name a decimal between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5. Well, it could be 0 0.41, 0 0.42, so on, right? Any of those would work, right? Because we can add zeros to four temps and five temps, and 40 hundredths and 50 hundredths are equivalent values. So we basically need something that's in between, or anything from 41 hundredths to 49 hundredths would be in between. All right, let's move on to page 60. All right, so ordering fractions and decimals. So we, we can order fractions and decimals by rewriting the fractions as equivalent decimals or by rewriting the decimals as equivalent fractions. So for instance, if we're going to order two tenths, three fourths, eight tenths, one half, one fourth, or four tenths from least to greatest, we could change the fraction values all into decimals. So one fourth we know is 25 hundredths, one half is five tenths, and three fourths is 75 hundredths. Then we could use a number line and plot all the values. So we have two tenths, 25 hundredths, four tenths, five tenths, 75 hundredths, eight tenths. And then we just would put them in order, okay, left to right. Okay, the least value is the furthest to the left. The greatest value is the furthest to the right. And so the numbers from least to greatest are two tenths, one fourth, four tenth, a half, three fourths, and eight tenths. So when we go back to rewrite the numbers in order from least to greatest, remember we have to use the numbers that were given in the question. Okay, not the numbers that we, um, like the decimals, the uh, fractions we changed to, de to decimals. So when we rewrite it, make sure you write it as the fraction form. <clears throat> All right, so that's one way. We could change fractions into the decimals to make them all match, or we could also do decimals into fractions and make them match. So order 1 12th, 2 thirds, and 35 hundredths from least to greatest. So step one, we could write the decimal as an equivalent fraction. Okay, since these are in fraction form, we could change the 35 hundredths to 35 hundredths. It would simplify to 7 twentieths. Now, of course, we would want to find a common denominator to make it the easiest way to compare. So how what's the least common multiple of <clears throat> 12, 3, and 20? We would find that 60 is the least common denominator of all three fractions. So we'd multiply 1 12th by 5, when we get 5 sixtieths. 2 thirds, we would multiply by 20, and we get 40 sixtieths. And 7 twentieths, we'd multiply by 3 to get 21 sixtieths. So then we can just compare the numerators, right? So 5 is less than 21, 21 is less than 40. So the fractions in order were 5 sixtieths, 21 sixtieths, and 40 sixtieths. And so we would then just use the numbers that we were given in the original question. And so the order would be 1 12th, 35 hundredths, and 2 thirds. Uh, yes. Okay. So number three, <clears throat> order the fractions and decimals from least to greatest. Okay. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, we could change the decimals into fractions or the fractions into decimals. Okay, so I think I'm going to use change the decimal the fractions into decimals. So I know three fifths, it takes 20 fifths to equal a whole. So 20 times 3 is 60. So three fifths is the same as 
60 hundredths. 15 hundredths, I don't need to change. And 7 tenths, I know there's 10 dimes in, or 10 tenths in a tenth, in a hundred. So 10 times 7 is 70 hundredths. Okay, so in order from least to greatest, the least value is 15 hundredths. which is less than 60 hundredths, which is less than 70 hundredths, which is less than 85 hundredths. Okay, so 60 hundredths, that was 3 fifths. 70 hundredths was 7 tenths. And then 0 0.85. All right, move on to page 61. Okay, so let's continue or comparing and ordering rational numbers. So you can use a number line to compare and order positive and negative rational numbers. For example, example two, five friends completed a triathlon that included a three mile run, a 12 mile bike ride, and a half mile swim. To compare their running times, they created a table that shows the difference between each person's time and the average time with negative numbers representing times less than the average. So when we talk about um, running speed, if your time is less than the average, you're actually quicker than the average runner. You finished before the average runner. So time above or below average in minutes. So John finished a half a minute after the average runner. Sue, one and four tenths. Anna was below the average by one and one fourth minute. Mike was two minutes below, uh, not two minutes below. Um, in minutes, yes, yes, it is. So minus, he was two minutes faster. And Tom was one in 95 hundredths over the average runner. So use a number line to order the numbers from greatest to least. Okay, in this case, there's they're changing the fractions into decimals. So one half is the same as five, five tenths. Negative one and one fourth is the same as negative one and 25 hundredths. Okay, so <clears throat> then you put the numbers on the number line. So we have Mike at negative two. We have Anna at negative one and one fourth. We have John at five tenths. We have Sue at one and four tenths. And we have Tom at one and 95 hundredths. So we're going to order them from greatest to least. The greatest or the longest time was one and 95 hundredths. Then one and four tenths, one half, negative one and four, one fourth, and negative two. Remember that the greater the values are, they go to the right. So further right. And the smaller values are to the left. So explain how you can use the number lines to compare the rational numbers for Anna and Mike. Okay, so Anna is right there. And Mike is right here. So Mike is further to the left, so his running sp speed was less. Okay, since her number is to the right of Mike's number, her number is greater. All right, number five. <clears throat> to compare their bike times, the friends created a table that shows the differences between each person's 
time and the average bike time or bike time. Order the bike times from least to greatest. So we have negative one and eight tenths, one, one and two fifths, one and nine tenths, and negative one and twenty five hundredths. I'm going to convert these to decimals. So two fifths, again I know there's twenty nickels in a dollar or twenty fifths in in one hole. And so 20 times 20 is 4. So 1.4 is the same as 1 and 2 fifths. And 1 and 9 tenths, we just write that as 1.9. Right, so do we need to write these from least to greatest. So the one, the number that would be the furthest to the left is negative 1.8. And then that would be the next one, negative 1.25. Okay, and now we're going further right. We have 1, 1.4, and 1.9. So it would be 1, and then 1.4, and 1.9. Okay, so negative 1.8 is the least. Negative 1.25 comes next, followed by 1, followed by 1 and 2 fifths. And one and nine tenths is the greatest time. Let's move on to page 62. <clears throat> and we're going to just basically practice these concepts now. All right, so you find an equivalent fraction or decimal for each number. All right, well, if we say this value, it tells us the fraction name. This is six tenths. So we write six tenths. We could also reduce that though because common factor of 6 and 10 is 2. So we could say 6 tenths or 3 fifths. 1 fourth is what we call benchmark fraction. And 1 fourth or 1 quarter is 0 0.25. If we say 9 tenths, that would be the fraction. One tenth, three tenths is written as zero point three. One and four tenths. Now we notice that four and ten are both even numbers, so we know we can reduce by a factor of two. So if we simplify four tenths, we would get two fifths. So one and four, one and four tenths or one and two fifths. Four fifths, okay, again, we know that there's 20 fifths in one hole. 20 times four is 80, so 0.8. Four tenths, and we already know that that simplifies to two fifths. And six eighths, if I reduce that by dividing by the greatest common factor, 2, I get 3 fourths. And 3 fourths is a benchmark fraction. 3 fourths or 3 quarters. So it would be 0 0.75. All right, number 10. Use the number line to order the rational numbers from least to greatest. 75 hundredths. So that's going to be in between 7 tenths and 8 tenths. 1 half will be five tenths, four tenths, and one fifth. Well, one fifth, if we turn it into tenths, it would be two tenths. So, all right, so let's order these. So one fifth is the least, followed by four tenths, followed by one half, followed by Zero, uh, 75 hundredths, right? Use the tape. The table shows the lengths of fish caught by three friends at the lake last weekend. Write the lengths in order from greatest to least. All right, so we see that they're all 12s, right? <clears throat> um, I'm going to go ahead and change them all into decimals. Okay, again, there's 20 fifths in a hole, so 20 times 3 is 60, 
So 12.6. So 12 and 60 hundredths. And 3 fourths is the same as saying 3 quarters. So 12 and 75 hundredths. So the greatest fish is 12 and 3 fourths. Then 12 and 7 tenths. And finally 12 and 3 fifths. All right, list the rational numbers in order from least to greatest. So we have 2 and 3 tenths, 2 and 6 tenths. 2 and 4 fifths is easy to change to a decimal. There's 20 fifths in a whole. 20 times 4 is 80. So 2.8. From least to greatest. So 2.3, 2.6, 2 and 4 fifths. All right, three sixteenths is not the easiest to turn into a decimal. We'd have to divide. We could do that. And five forty eighths is not as easy. So why don't we change the decimals into fractions this time? So five tenths can be written as one half. So we have one half, three sixteenths, seventy five hundredths. Well, we know that that's the same as saying three quarters or three fourths, and five forty eighths. All right, so now we need to find a common denominator. Well, let's see. 48 is our largest value. Can 4 become 48? Yeah, by multiplying by 12. Can 16 become 48? Yeah, by multiplying by 3. And 2 can become 48 by multiplying by 24. So <clears throat> 1 half times 24 over 24, we get 24 48. 3 sixteenths, we multiply by 3 over 3 and get 9 48. 3 fourths, we multiply by 12 and get 36 48. And then we already have 5 48. And so we have to put these in order from least to greatest. So we have 24 48, 9 48, 36 48, and 5 48. So 5 48 is the smallest, or the least value. Then 9 48, which was 3 16. And then we have 24 48 and 36 48. So 1 half, or 0 0.5, is next. And the greatest value is 75 hundredths. which was 36 48. Okay, number four, 14. We have 5 tenths, 1 fifth, 35 hundredths, 12 20 fifths, and 4 fifths. Uh, this one's probably easiest to turn to, to fractions again because 5 and 25, those easily turn into hundreds. 5 tenths easily turns into 135 hundredths, already is 100. So, so 5 tenths. 1 fifth, 35 hundredths, 12 20 fifths, 4 fifths. So we can turn these all into hundredths, right? So 5 tenths, we multiply by 10 over 10, and we get 50 hundredths. 1 fifth, we multiply by 20 over 20, and get 20 hundredths. We already have 35 hundredths. And in four fifths, we'd multiply by 20, and we'd get 80 hundredths. So the smallest value, <clears throat> we have 50 hundredths. We have 50, 20, 35, 80. So 20 hundredths is the smallest, and that was one fifth. Then 35 hundredths.
Oh, I forgot to do 12 25ths. Okay, so 12 25ths change would be 48 hundredths. So that's the next one, 12 25ths. And then our largest value would be 4 fifths. I left out a number. Oh, 5 tenths. Ay, ay, ay. All right, let me rewrite that, guys. Sorry. 1 fifth, 0 0.35, 12 25ths, 0 0.5, and the largest value is 4 fifths. All right, 15. We have 3 fourths, 7 tenths, 3 fourths, and 8 tenths. So we know that a if we were to list 4 and 10, the common factors of 4 and 10, we'd get 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And we know that 10 can become 20. So we can change all of these to 20ths. So 3 fourths times 5 over 5, 15 twenties. 7 tenths times 2 would be negative 14 twentieths. Negative 3 fourths times 5, negative 15 twentieths. And 8 tenths times 2, we'd get 16 twentieths. <clears throat> so the smallest values are our negatives. Negative 7 tenths is equal to negative 14 twentieths, and negative 3 fourths is equal to negative 15 twentieths. So negative 3 fourths is smaller than negative 7 tenths. And then we have to put 3 fourths and 8 tenths. 3 fourths is equal to 15 twentieths, and 8 tenths is equal to 16 twentieths. So 3 fourths followed by 8 tenths. And number 16. I'm going to go ahead and put 16 on another piece of paper. Negative 3 eighths, 5 16 negative 65 hundredths, and 2 fourths. Well, it would probably be easiest to change the decimal into a fraction. So let's, let's do that. 65 hundredths and 2 fourths. 65 hundredths we can reduce by dividing by 5, by a factor of 5. We get negative 13 twentieths. Okay, in this one we have two negatives, right? And we have two positives. So actually I could just find the common denominator of the two negatives and compare them. So I know that eight can become 40 by multiplying by five. And 13 twentieths can become 40 by multiplying by two. So we have negative 15 fortieths compared to negative 26 fortieths. So which one would be further to the left? Negative 26 fortieths. So that would be negative 65 hundredths and negative 3 eighths. Okay, then we have 5 sixteenths and 2 fourths. Well, I know 4 can become 16. By multiplying by 4. So we have 8 sixteenths compared to 5 sixteenths. So 5 sixteenths and the greatest value then is 2 fourths. So 0 0.65 is the smallest. Negative 3 eighths 
5 sixteenths and 2 fourths. All right, 17. 2 and 3 tenths, 2 and 4 fifths, negative 2 and 6 tenths. All right, so if we change negative 2 and 4 fifths into a decimal, we know that there's 20 fifths in a whole. So 20 fifths times 20 times 4 is 8. So we can have negative 2.3, negative 2.8, negative 2.6. So the least value is negative 2 and 4 fifths, then negative 2.6, and the largest is negative 2.3. Okay, negative 6 tenths, negative 5 eighths, negative 7 twelfths, negative 72 hundredths. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and change the 5 eighths and the 7 twelfths into decimals. So in this case, we take 5 and divide by 8. We know we can't get any 8s from 5. 6 times 8 is 48. So 5 eighths is the same as 0 0.625 and 7 twelfths. We take 7 and divide by 12. We know we can't take any 12s from 7. Okay, so and then it's going to keep repeating. So 7 twelfths is the same as basically 5 point zero, uh, 0 0.58. Okay, so let's compare them now. So 7 twelfths is the same as negative 0 0.583. All right, so the least value is negative 0 0.72, then negative 5 eighths, negative 0 0.6, and negative 7 twelfths. Okay, negative 0 0.625 is slightly to the left of 0 0.6. All right, number 19, 1 and 45 hundredths, 1 and a half, 1 point. 3, okay, one third. if we divide that, we get 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So I'm going to change these into fractions, uh, into decimals. All right, so we, got, we have 1 in 45 hundredths, 1 in 5 tenths, 1 in 3 tenths, 1 in 2 tenths. So the smallest value is 1 in 2 tenths, then 1 and 1 third and 1.45, and then we have one and one half. Okay, so this one, they're already all written as decimals, and to make it easy to compare, we have this in hundredths, this in hundredths, so let's just put a zero after the two tenths. So three tenths is the same as 30 hundredths, and five tenths is the same as 50 hundredths. All right, so the smallest value is negative 0 0.35, then negative 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.55. All right, 21. Identi identify a temperature colder than 21, I'm sorry, than negative 7 and 2 temps Fahrenheit. 
write an inequality that relates the temperatures. Describe their positions on a horizontal number line. All right, so <clears throat> colder. So that means it has to be lower, right? So negative 7.3, negative 7.4, negative 7.5, so on, so on, right? So I don't know, I can, I'm going to use negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit. So the inequality would be negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit is less than negative 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Where would their positions be? The negative 8.0 would be below, I'm sorry, would be to the left of negative 7.2. Okay, so the graph of negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit would be to the left of negative 7.2, which means it is a lesser value. All right. Page 63, number 22. Rosa and Albert received the same amount of allowance each week. The table shows what part of their allowance they each spent on video games and pizza one week. So who spent more of their allowance on video games? All right, well, we have video games here. We know that one half is the same as 0 0.5. So who spent more? Albert. And the inequality would be one half is greater than four tenths. Who spent more of their allowance on pizza? So 25 hundredths and two fifths. Again, we know that there's uh, 20 fifths in a whole. So 20 times two is 40. So we'd have 0 0.40 and 0 0.25. So in this case, Rosa spent more. And the equivalent, the, fraction, the inequality would be two fifths is greater than 25 hundredths. Who spent the greater part of their total allowance and how do you know? All right, so Albert spent 0 0.5 and 0 0.25. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. Rosa spent 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4. So she spent eight tenths. Okay. Eight tenths greater than seventy five hundreds, right? Okay, twenty three. A group of friends is collecting aluminum for a recycling drive. Each person who donates at least four and 2,500 pounds of aluminum receives a free movie co coupon. The weight of each person's donation is shown in the table. <clears throat> All right. So we have four and three tenths pound, five and <clears throat> five tenths pounds, six and one sixth pounds, 15 fourths pounds, and four and three eighths pounds. Order the weights of the donations from greatest to least. All right, so Micah's, I'm going to change that into a mixed number. 15 divided by 4. I can get 3 fourths from 15 with a remainder of 3. So 15 fourths is the same as 3 and 3 fourths. Okay, well, this is read as 4 and 3 tenths, 5 and 5 tenths, 6 and 1 sixth, 3 and 3 fourths, and 4 and 3 eighths. Okay, well... <clears throat> 
I know that the greatest value is six and one sixth, then five and one fifth. The least value is three and three fourths. So all I have to really do is decide between four and three tenths and four and three eighths. Well, let's change three eighths into a decimal. Okay, we notice that it's 3.75. So Peter's is the same as saying 4.375. All right, so that is slightly bigger than 4.3. So the smallest value is 15 fourths, then 4.3, then 4 and 3 eighths, then 5.5, and 6 and 1 sixth. So why didn't I find a common denominator or change everything to decimals and compare that way? Well, because when I looked at the whole numbers, it pretty much told me the order of the decimals or the order of the numbers or the weights. Okay. And so the only one that was not quite clear was 4.3 and 4 and 3 eighths. So I just changed the 3 eighths into a decimal. Okay, and B, which of the friends will receive a free movie coupon and which will not? So you have to donate four and one fourth pounds or four and 25 hundredths pounds to get a free movie coupon. So Brenda does, Claire, Jim, and Peter get the coupon. Oh, poor Mike is the only one that didn't get it. Let's see, all right, so what if? Would the person with the smallest donation win a movie coupon if she or he had collected a half pound more of aluminum? Okay, well, let's see. So 15 fourths plus one half. We know that two can become four. So the common denominator would be two fourths. I can rewrite one half as two fourths. And so we'd get 17 fourths. 17 divided by four is four and one fourth, which is the same as four and 25 hundredths. So yes. Page 64, number 24. The table shows how the birth weights of five kittens compare to the average birth weight of a kitten. A negative number represents a weight that is below average. All right, so order the numbers, numbers in the table from least to greatest. So we know our least values are our negative values. And one whole is... going to be further to the left than negative 75 hundredths because negative 75 hundredths is not even one whole. So negative one and one eighth would be the least. Negative 75 hundredths would be next. Okay, we know that <clears throat> we have three positives left. We have one, three, and two. Do we need to find a common, do we need to change them to fractions to compare? Do we need to change them to decimals to compare? No, we don't. Because if we just look at the whole numbers, it tells us everything we need to know. So one and seven eighths is next, and two and a half, and the largest is 3.1. Which kitten weighed the least? 
well, that would be the one that's furthest to the left. So negative 1 and 1 eighth would be kitten D. Which kitten's birth weight differed the most from the, a from the average? In other words, which, which one's the furthest away from zero? Well, three is going to be the furthest away from zero. So kitten C. All right, 25. Explain how you would order from least to greatest three numbers that includes a positive number, a negative number, and zero. The negative number would be least. then zero, and the greatest would be a positive number. Okay, we know the negative number has to be the least because it's to the left of zero. Zero is going to be in between the negative and the positive because it's in between. So the positive number is going to be the greatest. It's furthest to the right. Luke and Lena's parents allow them to borrow against their allowances. The inequality, negative 11 and 50 cents, is less than $10.75 compared to the current balances they have with their parents. Luke has a greater debt with his parents than Lena has. How much does Luke owe his parents? Well, he owes them Okay, well, if negative 1150 represents how much a person owes compared to negative $10.75, this one's a larger debt. So it says Luke has a greater debt. And 27. If you know the order from least to greatest of five negative rational numbers, how can you use that information to order the absolute values of those numbers from least to greatest? It's going to be the opposite. Okay, they'd be in the reverse order. All right, so wouldn't the least negative number be the farthest from zero? So if you didn't take the absolute value of it, it would be the greatest value to the right. Okay. 
So basically, if you know the order of neg five negative numbers, well, let's just say negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. All right. Would you not agree that negative five is this furthest from zero, right? That's what makes it the least value. If I was taking the absolute value of it, The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So, from least to greatest, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Not 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's opposites. <clears throat> All right, so that's it for lesson 3.3. And so until our next lesson, I will see you soon.